Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. And each week when I say that this is our little corner of the internet, today I get to prove it. Today's video will have something for everyone. We're going to talk a lot about pens. At the end of the video, I'll show my montage of classical music. I hope you'll stick around for that. And most importantly, I'm going to take your questions and answer them. So today, without any more ado, let's get into the first question and answer video with Hemingway Jones. Before I start today's video, let's do a quick pen check. Today, I'm using the Lamy Safari in Mango, and I've swapped out the nib for their calligraphy nib, which is a 1.1 stub. And I'll tell you, with writing with it, it seems awfully narrow. It feels much more narrow than your usual 1.1 stub, and it has fantastic line variation, and I love this pen, and I'll tell you why I've been using it quite a bit. I'm using this Bottega Obscura journal. It's quite small for a journal for me and I need to jam in all those words and letters so this pen is perfect to do it to give a little bit of style to my writing and to cram a lot of information in a small space and if you're curious about the ink color it's diamine oxblood so there we go so I'm going to go through things very briskly today. I want to make it fun and entertaining and to have a nice flow. Just give you a quick background. My name is Hemingway Jones. That's my nom de internet that I've been using for quite a long time, but it's definitely resonated in the pen world. So it's a lot of fun. I've been into fountain pens since the early 1990s. I've experimented with a lot of different pens and kind of my style is I like to tell you guys what my personal feelings are. I don't really get into the particulars too often. I figure if you really want to know how many millimeters a pen is or how many grams it weighs, then you can simply go to the website and look that kind of specific information up. I think what you're really looking for is, is the pen good? Can you express yourself with it? What is it like to write with it? What kind of associations does the pen have? What does the pen do for you? And I think as you get to know me and my reviews and you get to know my aesthetic, then you'll know where you fit within it. And maybe if I like something, you'll know that you won't or vice versa, you'll definitely know that you like it as well. So that's the idea for the channel. I'm here to talk about pens to share my knowledge with you, to learn from you and share that knowledge and keep it rolling so that we all have a great experience that's very much community-based, very accepting of different views and just a great place to keep you inspired because to me, the best thing about pens is using them. And I think the best thing to use them for is journaling. And you'll hear me talk about this quite a bit, but journaling is at the heart of everything I do. I journal every day for at least 20 minutes. You can see from my B-rolls that I'll journal virtually anywhere. And it's just a great way to get your thoughts down and to work through your anxieties, to plan out your projects, and just to use it as a tool to become a better person. And I'll say this to you before I get into the questions. If you're hesitant about starting journaling because you think that those daily banal things that you do are just not worthy of writing them down, I urge you, write them down. Those 
are the fence posts, the mile markers on the road of your life. Those are the points by which your memories are anchored. Start first with the banal, with the movie you watched that day, and then move on from there to your projects, your anxieties, your goals, your dreams, and your ideas. Believe me, it will resonate that much more. So a few days back, I asked you to submit your questions both on my Instagram at Hemingway underscore Jones at Instagram and here in the community section on YouTube. And I got some excellent responses. So let's jump into some of these Q&A questions. I guess that's redundant. Let's jump into some of these questions. Our first question comes from Duck and Huang. I hope I pronounced that okay. The question is, between the Twisby Diamond 580 and the Twisby Eco, which pen do I prefer? Now, obviously you've seen that I own both, and I do own two Ecos, as, as you also pointed out in your question. So, this is how it breaks down. I got the 580 first, and that started my love affair with Twisby. And I think the Diamond 580 is an exquisite pen. I love it, it's fantastic, it's very high quality. It is a better pen than the Eco. Now let's set that aside for a second. The actual writing experience between the Eco and the Diamond 580 is nearly identical. The Diamond 580 might have a slightly larger, a little better nib, but they write virtually the same. So in my opinion, I go with the Eco all day long because you can buy two of those for the same price as the Diamond 580. And also, I just love the stub nib on the Eco. So for me, I go to the Eco first. I just think it's an extraordinary value and just a great pen. Randy asks, between a nib with feedback and a nib that's smooth, which one do I prefer? And Randy would also like to see more content on Seiko. And I'll put that out to you guys. When I first started this channel, I was doing a bit more things beside fountain pens, and I decided to focus exclusively on fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling. However, I do love watches. I like men's fashions. I think occasionally I might rotate something in, but can you let me know in the comments what you think? Are you very much narrowly focused on writing in fountain pens, or would an occasional watch video be fun as well. Let me know. So the reason that I don't do more, Randy, is that they just didn't do very well. And I think in YouTube, it's very much whatever niche you happen to be in. And I think mine is fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling. So I've really kept it there. Occasionally on my TikTok, you'll see some watch content. And I really haven't done it on Instagram, but perhaps I will. Now, as for whether I like feedback or if I like smoothness, I'd say historically, and I think judging from a lot of my reviews, you'll find that smoothness is probably my primary concern. I love watching a lot of ink being troweled across the page. For me, that is really the distinction between a fountain pen and other types of pens. It's that incredible smoothness and the visual glistening ink and the edge of your nib just driving those variated lines in different ways to form extraordinary words. That's what I strive for. However, occasionally I do love even scratchy nibs. Sometimes I like the sound of it. I love rough interesting paper and hearing a scratchy nib just drive a thin line across it. Occasionally I really long for that, but if you're looking at me on average, it's definitely smoothness. Our next question is from Safish Rao. Hopefully I said that okay. And he asks, what is my profession? So I am in financial services. He also asks whether I have a monthly budget on pens, and I really don't. Remember, I review quite a few pens over on TikTok, so I get a lot of pens from those companies that sponsor me, so that helps quite a bit. And I'm also 
older, so I have some resources. I'm able to buy pretty much any pen that I want. But I do try to rein things in because I really don't like buying too many things. One of the things I love about fountain pens is that you could have one pen, like the Twisby Eco, and just use it for the rest of your life. You could just keep refilling it, and that's a great thing about them but it gets a little bit defeated when we each own like a few hundred of them it's hard to argue that it's this renewable resource but as an idea it is and then he also asks what's the maximum amount that i like to spend on a pen and i'd say it's probably around 300 dollars. i think that pens above that tend to have to be really special to get my attention because everything at 300 and below is so extraordinary. You have the Pilot Custom 823. Once you have that pen, do you really need anything else? You can get used Mont Blanc for under that that are extraordinary. So you have a lot of range between you know, zero and 300. So once you go over, I think you get very much diminished returns. Although there are some spectacular pens there too, like the Egyptomania, which you guys know I'm crazy about, and the Mont Blanc 149, which is amazing and everyone should own it. Although if I were to buy it again, I would buy a used one. Probably be a little more interesting anyway to have the history of one that's 30 years old or whatnot. Over on Instagram, Fountain Pen Chef asks, between the Lamy 2000 in brown, which is a beautiful pen, or the Mont Blanc 146, which one should he pick? And he says he already has the Mont Blanc 146, so I think the easy answer there is to get the Lamy 2000, especially in that gorgeous brown. Now, the one caveat I'll say is that you have to like hooded nibs. I personally struggle with them a little bit, even with the Parker 51. I have a little bit of a hard time finding the edge, and I also find that the sleek grip with nothing really to cling to has my fingers sort of all over the place. Nevertheless, it's such a great pen, and I think it's great to have some variety in your collection that if you already have the 146, why not try the Lamy 2000? It is an exceptional pen. So on Instagram, both I Rosenthal and Andrew159 asked whether I could show my first pen, and sadly I cannot. It was a Waterman, and it had a beautiful gold nib. I bought it at the bookstore at Boston University, and I didn't know how to use it properly. I was pressing too hard, and I literally snapped it in half. Pretty sure I have the pieces somewhere, and if I ever clean up and find them, I'll make a whole YouTube video about it. But it's definitely something I'm very sad about. Super Cool Cam asked, what is the secret to a happy life and marriage? And I'm happy to answer these kind of questions. In my opinion, one of the most important things is to live beneath your means. I think many of us here in America and in the Western world, we're sort of seeking these ideals of excess. And a lot of that is just sort of ridiculous. You don't need a giant house. You don't need a new car. I mean, if you love those things, go after them. But uh, for me, I'd rather be liquid, have assets, have passive income sources and feel secure and to share my life with my family. And when it comes to conflict, it's funny, you think of marriage and the first thing that comes to your mind is conflict. But when things come up, the idea of argument resolution in a marriage is not to win. You don't win an argument. You try to restore peace. You listen to what's going on, their needs, your needs, and come to a compromise and try to make each of your lives better. It's not easy in this world and you really need a good partner to be beside you. And I am so lucky. I have the perfect person with me. My wife is amazing. So I hope you find the same thing. If you already have it, I hope you get to enjoy it for a long time. Riccio from Instagram asks, what is the best fountain pen for a teacher? And I think there are two great choices. And if you think I'm way off, please let me know in the comments. My first one would be the Lamy Safari. For me, that is the perfect pen for academia. It's just perfect. It's indestructible. It's got an interesting nib. 
It's a quick draw pen, so it's fantastic. My second choice is the Pilot Vanishing Point. Another amazing and beautiful pen that's quick on the draw and just great for scribbling notes and for grading papers. So those are my two choices. What are yours? Well, I hope you've enjoyed our first Q&A video. I'd love to do this again sometime. Thank you all so much for the questions. They were fantastic. I actually thought you guys were kind of easy on me. I was expecting some really tough and outrageous questions. And to tell you the truth, I would have answered those. I would have gone right to those first. I like to do that. So I'm pretty fearless and I just simply answer things very diplomatically. Let's put it that way. But fantastic slate of questions. Thank you all very much. If you think my answers were good, can you please let me know? If you think I'm way off base, can you do that? I like that too. I look forward to speaking to you all in the comments. Thank you all for watching and for spending some of your time with me. As you know, I release a new video each Thursday at noon Eastern time. So until then, please take care of yourselves and I'll see you further up the road.